Hey guys, Ivan here and this video we are starting with this new IABB Pro Classic Physique Competitor. I can't say I know much about him, his name is Andreas Foriadis and I also know that he has some sick looking lines and insane level of conditioning. So he pretty much blew the internet away, everybody is sharing his photos on IG, everybody is talking about this guy lately and they have the right to talk about him because what he brought to this stage was really freaking impressive. This was the first photo of him that surfaced, that was shared around, I saw this on Milos Sharchev Instagram page and this is probably a hotel room photo like right before the, the, right before the stage, maybe like a day before and I mean just look at this condition, this is Andreas Monzer level of conditioning, this is ridiculous, this is skinless, this is see-through skin, I mean I'm sure it looks way more impressive in person but on this photo right here it just looks I don't know, ridiculous. This is this is the level of conditioning that we haven't really seen in a long time. Is anybody really coming this shredded in Classic Physique Mr. Olympia? I don't think so. Now this guy, he is a former bodybuilder, but he used to do bodybuilding up to 90 kilos, that's up to 200 pounds. Something similar to 212 bodybuilder, but in Europe. And uh, he now decided to do the Classic Physique, he barely made a weight cap, barely. Last time he tried, he failed actually. He wanted to compete in Classic Physique, but he just couldn't make it, couldn't make the weight. Now he managed. And the thing with him is, he, he is a bodybuilder, yes. He does have the freaky looking physique. He doesn't have those pretty lines of like Logan Franklin and Chris Bumstead. He doesn't have the clean look, uh, you know, the, the old school kind of Arnold Schwarzenegger structure. It's more of a 212 downsized bodybuilder, shredded, peeled, dehydrated who also knows how to hit the classic poses and also has some pretty good aesthetics and uh, great symmetry, great lines, great proportions, everything that makes him a great classic physique competitor. But of course, what stands out the most is the conditioning and you know the details, the maturity. So this guy with this grainy look, with these with these proportions and lines and an overall shape and muscularity and everything, it's going to be interesting what he can do at the Mr. Olympia stage. It would definitely be an interesting mashup. Chris Bumstead, Logan Franklin type of physiques versus these kind of physiques. It would really add a different element to classic physique. And I do have this guy uh, potentially being one of the top six classic physique competitors. Even though his look is completely different than the other guys, I still find this physique super freaking impressive with all these details, super, super deep cuts and striations, and just the see through skin. He can't do bad in Mr. Olympia, he just turned pro, I don't know when he's gonna qualify, which Mr. Olympia is he gonna do, is he really aiming for that, but I hope it happens as soon as possible. Since we started with Classic Physique, let's just continue the same way. Classic Physique top 2 right here, Chris Bumstead and Terence Ruffin, they met up, they trained together and they did some posing together as well. And we get to see a preview five weeks before the Mr. Olympia. Is this gonna be the final uh, call out again? Is it gonna be again these two guys for the title? Is Terence Ruffin gonna be the runner up again? That's more of a question. I don't think it's a question if Chris is gonna be the first. I think we all pretty much know that. If he lost, that would be a major upset. Nobody would really expect that to happen. But Terence, you know, he, his second spot as a runner up. That, that's not really that firm, it's not really set in stone, anybody else can take his spot, at this point, um, so Chris, he does look great, for sure, I mean, at 5 weeks out, we saw a lot of updates of him, and yeah, he looks amazing, he looks great, Terrence, with him, it's pretty much similar story as it is with Chris, Terrence doesn't look super, super impressive until he is completely shredded, once he loses all the body fat and he peaks entirely for the for the competition, he doesn't look that that impressive. I mean, here in this photo, I mean, after seeing all the other pro bodybuilders, you know, I'm just not super amazed with his physique. But I know he will be in crazy shape at the Mr. Olympia. He will know how to present himself, and he is going to be one of the top guys for sure. Now, is Robert Teams going to take him out? Is going to be Brion Nainsley? Is Logan Franklin gonna be able to do it, or maybe Alex Cambronero? I don't know, it's gonna be interesting what's gonna happen behind, below that first spot, so we're gonna see in about 5 weeks. But don't let his current photos confuse you, yes, when he's in the off-season, when he's prepping until he's completely ready, 
he doesn't look that great. His waist looks a little bit wide, his physique looks kind of a little bit blocky, the arms look kind of short, but even though he has a good structure, that's not exactly his strongest suit. His strongest suit is his details. He has crazy details when he is ripped and also presentation. He knows how to present his physique the best way possible. So again, once he is dialed in, that's gonna be a dangerous package for just everyone. You want good structure for classic physique? You want aesthetic classic lines? Well, there you go, you can see them right here on Brandon Hendrickson, the Mr. Olympia in men's physique. Unfortunately, his legs are not up to par, he needs to bring them up big time if he wanted to compete in classic physique, but apparently he wants to, I mean, he's posing like a bodybuilder very often. There is no front double bicep in men's physique, so basically there is no posing in men's physique. I feel like he wants to try to do a classic physique, but again, he needs to bring his legs up big time. And as far as his upper body, it's phenomenal. I love his upper body. I mean, look at his front double bicep. Look at the bicep, the shape of those biceps. I mean, they're long, they're peaky, the arms are big, the vacuum looks amazing, uh, the waistline super tiny, overall symmetry and the shape of his upper body is just phenomenal. Now again, if he brings up those legs, calves too, he can do some serious damage in, in classic physique. I would love to see that happen. I think he's wasting away in men's physique. Yeah, he is the Mr. Olympia winner and I'm sure he's making great living out of it. But uh, I, I believe he loves bodybuilding. He wants to pose on the stage. Come on, Brandon, do the classic physique. I mean, look at this guy. Look at his aesthetics. He could do really, really well. That's gonna be enough classic physique talk and I think the best way to transition to open bodybuilding is with somebody who is kind of in the middle right there, that's Regan Grimes. I'm not saying that Regan could do classic physique and do just as well as he does in bodybuilding. Uh, he is not meant for classic physique, his body just wants to grow, he has a ton of muscle at this point, so of course classic physique is out of talks, but he does represent classic in open bodybuilding. He is not, uh, you know, the Branch Warren type of physique. He is more of a classic open bodybuilder. He does have really pretty lines, really good aesthetics. And in this photo right here, this quarter turn, he looks amazing. I mean, the legs look really massive, the chest looks great, the arms look big, the shoulders, the waistline, and the conditioning and everything. At five weeks out, he looks absolutely amazing. Now, finally, he's not going to be doing a bunch of shows this year. Mr. Olympia is going to be the only show that he does. Last year, Mr. Olympia was like his fifth show or something like that. I'm not sure. But he did quite a few shows before that. And he had a tired look to himself at the Mr. Olympia stage. Now, he's going to come fresh. And I think it's going to be a much, much better, better physique. Uh, it's going to be a big improvement. And with newly added muscle, I think he added some tissue in this offseason. At first, when he posted a couple of photos, as you guys know if you follow me, I felt like he didn't make any progress. But now, once he got a little bit leaner, he probably introduced some, uh, you know, pre-contest stuff, pre-contest gear. He's getting harder and drier. This is what always happens with every bodybuilder. He starts to actually show how much he progressed. And it looks like he made some progress. Uh, is it going to be a leap in, uh, in in results, you know, in placings? I don't know. The lineup this year is super competitive. Uh, like, seventh spot last year was this guy right here. Now, this is a freak bodybuilder. This is a freaky, freaky <laughs> as hell bodybuilder. That's Ian Valier. And, uh, of course, he is much leaner than Regan, but that's just because he competed recently and he's competing sooner than Regan. He is at three weeks out of Arnold Classic, and his gloats are, as you can see, his caption, desert dry, pretty much. I mean, they are absolutely shredded. He has no body fat on his gloats, so he's in insane conditioning. He's doing the Arnold in three weeks. How well can he do at that Arnold? Can he crack the top three? I think so. I think it's possible. I think it's pretty, pretty uh, safe bet to say that he's gonna crack the top three. I can see that happen. Because Ian, I mean, he has probably the most momentum out of every bodybuilder. He won two top pro shows back to back. And that's not something you see happen very often. So that means Ian means real business. And also, Ian is the kind of bodybuilder that looks better every next show. He never fades after he does many shows. 
I'm sure he knows what he's doing. Like he has the kind of body that gets flat super easily, and he's always staying super lean in the off season. So I'm sure after he competes once, he knows now that he cannot just keep dieting. He probably has to increase food. So he just gets harder and harder and bigger and fuller and more and more impressive. I mean, the transformation from Tampa to Texas in one week was extraordinary. He was just so much sharper and harder and everything. And I'm sure he's going to be much, much better at the Arnold and even better at the Mr. Olympia. So this is going to be insane package and uh, it's going to be hard for guys like Regan to beat guys like Ian because this is just sheer freakiness. Same thing goes with guys like Patrick Moore, the guys that are classic in bodybuilding. Too big for classic, but a little bit too small for bodybuilding. Not a freak. And in this photo right now, at 5 weeks out, honestly, he doesn't look like much. He looks pretty bad, honestly. Like, the conditioning is not there, and he is not a mass monster. But that's the thing with Patrick. Again, he shines when he is peeled. He is not playing the size game. He can't play that game. He plays the small joints, small waist, pretty lines, crazy conditioning uh, type of game. And um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work well for him. I mean, he was 10th at the Mr. Olympia, but that's probably one of the weakest Mr. Olympia lineups 2019. But this year, I think he's going to be like in the ballpark with Regan Grimes. I think these guys will be lucky if they crack the top 10. It's going to be difficult to do that. But again, guy like Patrick Moore can't really compare to a beast, to a monster like Ian Wallier. And again, at this point, at 5 weeks out, he doesn't look super peeled or super massive. But I'm sure when the time comes, he will be in shape. And that's going to be enough to look very impressive and to do quite well at the Mr. Olympia. Well, it's been quite a while since we saw something from this guy, Rafael Brandau. Another bodybuilder who is uh, representing classic in bodybuilding. Uh, too big, again, for classic, but a little bit too small for open bodybuilding. And this is him uh, like a week ago. And he's prepping for Portugal and Prague Pro. And this one is from today. So as you can see, he is getting in shape. His glutes are coming in. His hamstrings are also looking really good. And the back itself, it also looks pretty shredded. So overall, uh, I'm curious to see, did he actually gain some mass when he steps on that stage? So again, Romania Pro and Prague Pro. And if he wins each one of those two shows, he will qualify for the Mr. Olympia 2022 and then he will have an entire off season to actually gain more muscle so i'm really excited to see what this guy is gonna do this year and the next year because he has a lot of potential really good structure really good lines and uh, all he needs is muscle mass and if he adds it and he comes peeled it's gonna be hard bodybuilder to beat but he's a young guy as well he's in his late 20s so once he peaks and it's gonna happen probably in a couple of years He's going to be one of, the, one of the guys that take over the bodybuilding, I believe. The Mr. Olympia top 6. I think that's going to be the case. But this year, that's not going to be the case. This year, we're going to see some of these guys that are more established to dominate. Like Hari Chopin, who is in the United States. I talked about this in my previous video. I said that Hari this year needs to come sooner in the United States so he can have more time. You know, last year he came a couple of days before the Mr. Olympia. And he wasn't sure if he's going to be able to get there. Now, he already did it. He's there. He's in the United States. And with the help of his coach, one of the best coaches in the world, Hanny Rambod, he can be much, much better this year. He just needs to relax, listen to his coach, and come to the Mr. Olympia and absolutely dominate. Can he take over? Can he beat Big Remy? I think if everything goes well, and I don't see why it wouldn't, his physique has a really big potential to be the best physique on that stage. Can he win the Mr. Olympia though? That's kind of a different question. But if you ask me, do I think his physique can be the most complete overall on that stage in 2021? I think it can. Whatever you guys think though, tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel. All the best guys and bye bye.